Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to my Sunday talk. And as, as uh, I mentioned uh, last week, this week uh, we are going to talk about uh, from now on, continue four weekends, we are going to talk about uh, sort of environmentalism or how important is in environmental care and what that uh, thing, how that thing matters in Buddhism. So, yeah, this, uh, why we are doing this? Because uh, in this month we have art there, so we are trying to celebrate, how to say, not that celebrate, we are trying to contribute something for that day. So in order to doing something for one day, I thought uh, it's better to do in a few weekends. Anyway, I have to talk every Sunday, so <laughs> maybe this is a good way to do. So I think this is the uh, perfect way to do. And uh, that the subject is very really broad, and you can uh, talk about uh, ecology in many different perspectives. And uh, also, like many different uh, understanding, you can shift the focus point in different places. Then the I think talk went totally looks like in different shape. And so, but in that case, I know that I cannot talk about everything and also uh, I don't have the knowledge to talk about everything on environmental issue. Uh, so that's why what I was want to talk is how I can see uh, from my background, you know, my background is Buddhism, uh, so how I can understand it and then uh, what is uh, my contribution in that field. So these things I'm going to talk. So today I think you know, the, uh, we will try to talk more about uh, the preciousness of uh, life on earth. Why? Uh, because we're always talking about, uh, you know, the uh, uh, mother art and then we are always talking about uh, how important is to pro how important is uh, preserving the thing that we have already on the earth so I think this is uh, not about earth this is about the living being on earth if nobody is on this planet then uh, I don't think you know, is that important? Mercury is always burning there. It doesn't matter for anyone, right? For me, a few scientists, they want to see how it's working, you know, how, you know, it's close to sun or these kind of things. I mean that planet, maybe I made mistake in the name. For me, all those English names are very similar to each other. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, right, so the, this planet makes very different than other. I don't think because it has tree and water, I think it has life. That makes uh, this earth is different. So, So when I think about a general environmental issue, um, I don't remember I heard about it very earlier in my life. 
Uh, but we are sometimes we we'll hear a little bit about uh, environment issues, not issue, you know, how important it is from His Holiness teachings. He was talking about uh, uh, to protect environment, right? I did not understand anything that time. Uh, then I thought it, maybe he is talking about how to keep clean your you know, house and <laughs> the yards. I was talking about long time ago when I was a child. And then later on, we study more and more, then I, I hearing more and more, understanding more and more. Now I realize that all kinds of issues are related to environmental issue. Um, from our own way of thinking to uh, then all those uh, single things that growing in our neighborhood. So then in, in general understanding, when, uh, always we, when we're talking about uh, broader understanding of uh, broader subject of environment, uh, often we're talking about a climate change or climate emergency. And then earlier we call it uh, global warming, right? So uh, whether it called global warming or climate change, or climate uh, emergency, where we are talking about um, water, temperature, and uh, surely it has to do something with pollution too. So uh, something that we use, right? We need. If we don't need water, if we are not depending on temperature, and uh, then climate change doesn't matter for us. So always I'm saying for uh, Buddhist understanding, if somebody tell you climate change, they think, oh, climate is impermanent. It's always change. What's big deal with it, right? Uh, surely, you know, it's about a rapidly changing climate. Uh, surely, we have a snow two times or three times in this April. Uh, I don't think it is very normal. But surely, you know, there's no law that says we cannot have uh, snow in April. You know, there's no any law like that. So, but. Uh, that is happening in this world. Then when I was in India four years ago, more than that, they, are, they don't have snow where I live, but the problem is rain. Uh, the farmers always complain about uh, weather because they cannot predict very well. Earlier time when they do the farming, they predict, right? They predict they know what time is uh, to uh, start harvest. I heard now they are going to start it, right? <laughs> Pretty soon. So um, like that, then not only that, you know, it's really important for farmers. You need right time, uh, you know, right amount of water to plant something. You need right amount of water uh, to grow it up, grow your you know harvest. Then you also need a break to work in you know field. If it's raining all the time, you never get chance to you know work there. You cannot you know take out those uh, uh, unwanted grass uh, out. So this, even though there's no law, the climate should be you know follow kind of rule that is uh, supposed to be that way. But then when you also uh, get the crops, right, then also need a, 
sunny, warm weather. If you have a lot of uh, rain there, then all you know things fall down. Then they grow up again. So then you know it messes up all your you know uh, <coughs> work of your whole year. So so in that case, those farmers really depend on our weather. Then then. So then, who depend on the farmer? Then people who eat. If somebody eat plastics, then I don't know. Other than that, right? Who eat the regular food? Then they are depend on farmer. So that means you know, uh, climate is important for every uh, you know human being who eat. You know. Uh, Green and these things, also cloth. And then, um, not only human being, because of climate change, other species are, are suffering a lot. They could not tell what's happening. They don't have calendar, right? So they have to predict the whole uh, uh, their life, uh, you know, they have to go through whole their life according to what weather temperature. They have to know when they should leave, when they should come back. So, um, then global warming kills a lot of species. Uh, not just human being. Then, uh, but that is you know the kind of you know that they call it emergency, emer emergency issue, but not that. Then there are a lot of other things. Um, poisoning people, including you know everyone by landfills. How much we use, how much we throw, it's not going to disappear in your garbage bin, right? What you throw out, it will go somewhere. That is, I don't know, you know, Einstein said that, I heard that everything, if put all, you know, if you squeeze, squeeze everything, then it's like one cube. <laughs> I heard that, in I, I, I don't know why I mentioned it here, but it's not like that. I don't think so. Maybe this kind of, you know, uh, theoretical things. Your garbage cannot squeeze and make it a one piece of a sugar cube. Then, you know, you can, you know, put it in a the corner. Then that's all. No. Well, how much you throw out that goes to landfill, right? And then uh, somehow it creates the poison there, poisoning the earth. But uh, sometimes we forget that thing, there were some other thing, the factories. You know, they are dumping all those chemical things, then we are just yelling for them, we think that is really bad. But sometimes we forget to, you know, we forget what we were doing. <clears throat> so anyway, you know, the poison poisonings. Um, then factories, you know, what we are buying and what we are throwing is kind of really uh, bad. When you get it, it damages the environment. So everything that we buy, right, uh, most of them comes from uh, factories. The factories, what they did, surely you know, they feed many workers there. Other than that, there's a lot of waste. They put some waste in the sky, and you know that call what carbon issues that cause carbon issues there. Then there are dumb lot of uh, waste in the water or landfill or whatever. There, you know, surely it has to put somewhere. The uh, heavy things will not fly in the sky. So then we're damaged through that way. 
Then after we use it, then we throw it, then it's also damaged there. So anyway, uh, well, what we are doing is poisoning uh, the earth. Then there are uh, uh, issues of power, uh, poverty, being too power, poor to uh, have a better environment. I saw, you know, I heard many times, but you know, I, I want to tell you, I don't want to tell you what I heard. I want to tell you what I saw. You know, I saw on the roadside the who built road in India. So sad. They, you know, the, when it comes to uh, build the road, they bring people from far away. And those people uh, has no shelter and they just make a temporary shelter, just, you know, cover the, I don't know what it covers, you know, it's like really poor shelter. I cannot, I don't think that thing can protect you from rain, but maybe a little bit sunlight, you know, they have little, you know, uh, cover on the top, then they live there, then walk, they walk day and night, and they are not only young people, Right, they are not only single people. They comes with the family. Then I saw, there you know, uh, two three kids and one mother and walking there. So then, um, when you when they walk, they don't have you know to cover mouth you know cover mouth nothing. They just walk like you were walking in your. You were walking in your office, like that, and. I saw that their face are totally covered with dusk. Mother, kids, right? Uh, then we were walking near the roadside, have to cover everything. It's like dust everywhere. That they are walking there. They went uh, on, uh, on the way I come back. You know, then those kids are drinking water from a uh, roadside uh, gutter, or you know, really dirty one. They are drinking there. Then, then the mother was seeing these things, but she did not say anything. But you know, that is their life. So then we also don't need to think about uh, India like that far. In, in this country, we also have uh, issues of being to poor uh, society and environment. And then, I uh, think this is a really uh, big issue, like mani manipulating laws to exploit goods from uh, the planet, or you know, nowadays we have law. Sometimes good, we have law. Sometimes it's bad. Why? The law is not perfect all the time. The law is made by people like us. means like, you know, I'm not talking about in good sense, I'm talking about like, you know. So then uh, always there is kind of a uh, crack. You can do a lot of things without getting punishment. You can do it. So then, uh, uh, you know, some people use the law and then uh, damaging environment. Mining, water shifting, then the walls, right? So then those are a really a big damage. I think, you know, to preserve environment, to preserve this planet, a lot of things have to connect each other. 
you cannot disconnect uh, anything from any, uh, everything sort of then you know I think nothing will uh, get better so um, so these are issues then there are you know other lot of issues so in that case most of issues is related to uh, environment also mental issue if you t talk to people from different places some people couldn't understand a lot of issue it's not because they are not that smart it's because they grow up in different environment different environment and then So that makes uh, they couldn't understand a lot of things due to not understanding clearly issue, and uh, then you know damage more than you know uh, other people do. So anyway, so this is a, gen a general uh, maybe not that is not everything. There are definitely a lot of things that I and did not mention here you guys know much better than me in that case so why i bring up these things because always we have to know uh, to talk something about we have to know what is the problem if you don't know what is the problem then i think you know <laughs> there's not much uh, meaning to talk about it So then, you know, this climate change, poisoning uh, uh, Earth, and you know, all these issues, what it, uh, why it is important, because all those issues, all these kind of uh, problems cause uh, taking life of human being animals, birds, fish, right? The fishing is big issue. I heard that who were fishing in the uh, big ocean, they kill more than they need. Maybe the, I heard that it's also, uh, you know, has to do with the law. You know, sometimes they, you know, the laws are not that smart. Always, you know, there is kind of stupidity in there. So, so it costs life. So that's why it's important. So then we know that you know, each of our life is important, but it's, it's really hard to understand. That all life is important. That's why you know we are always talking about the practice of Bodhisattva's life, right? Bodhisattva's lives. So what is Bodhisattva? What is different? Uh, normal people only understand uh, the value of own life, but they couldn't understand other. Then a lot of people understand meaning of human life. They never understand meaning of other species' life. Just think about you know in this planet, there is no human being at the beginning. That is clear, right? There is no human being at the beginning. It start from animal, then slowly, slowly. You know, form into the human being. That is uh, what we are uh, talking about. I'm not uh, referring referring something uh, that someone says. I'm trying to you know understand what is fact.
So in that case, that's true where human beings are different, maybe a special animal. <laughs> you animal that has, you know, uh, more capability than others. Now that they have a lot of videos, uh, that chimpanzees are wearing women's clothes, then some you know people are nurturing monkeys. Now you can see it. How close where are they? In but in some trust, those apes are doing much better than us. Right, so they have better memory than us. So, so we are different kind of animals. So in, in, in that case, what I was trying to say is, is not only human life is uh, precious. It's not like that. If you compare with other, maybe, you know, human life is more precious than other, but all life in this planet is precious. I remember one story, <laughs> that is funny story, you know, I just tell you. When I was a kid, I think that time I was nine years old, maybe like that. Then uh, I went to a picnic, like uh, three hours away from the monastery. It's a group of, you know, other Rinpoches. They were went there. And then when I got there, it's like really... Uh, Beautiful place, uh, waterfall, big waterfall is really, you know, you have to go all the way down to get the bottom, bottom of waterfall. And it's hard to go there. I remember I did not went, go all the way down there. It's like really hard to go down, then coming back, right? Uh, but uh, then it's like a little bit rainy season. Then I found underneath a, a, a tree, there are like many small mango tree like you know the mango fall down then it grow back right that is like only six inches mango tree it has like four like really fresh leaves there then i thought i want to uh, take take it back to monastery then I uh, put it in the plastic bag and tied up with it. I don't want to dry the root. And then I just brought it back. The, on the way, the person who is uh, you know, taking care of me then told me that, oh, throw it away. What are you doing? Throw it away, right? And that, that is hard. You, know, you have to throw it away. You like it. You think that has value. Then he told me, throw it away. I don't want, but then I was, you know, I have no any option, then I have to be obedient, <laughs> then, you know, top that time. Then I, the guy said, oh, why are you doing this? These things available everywhere in there, why you are taking this? Throw it away. <laughs> okay, then I throw it away. <laughs> so, so, so the thing is that um, that small thing, the growing small planet, right? He said that it is everywhere. That's true, it's everywhere. But there's, if you don't care one this kind of small tree, then it cannot be everywhere trees. You cannot see trees everywhere, right? So, so what I was trying to say is, even this small thing, to grow as a big tree, you need, somebody need to care for that thing. So this uh, small planet, I think, is precious. If I grow that uh, mango tree, uh, then surely, you know, later on, if it become a big tree, it contribute, you know, a lot of good things. But you know, 
Then later on, I got a lot of trees near my house. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, then when you have trees, you know, then it's so nice, so beautiful. So anyway, <clears throat> so you know, when I said important of life, surely you know, I mainly thinking about a creature. I'm not thinking about a tree, but it's still, it's not sure. You know, tree has life. I mean, you know, tree has consciousness. Uh, like us or not, that is not sure. It's not sure at all so far. Even the Buddha's time, some people ask Buddha, is there consciousness in tree or not? Right? Uh, so always consider, they did not say there's no tree. It could be, right? Tree can have consciousness. So uh, I don't think it is important to know uh, tree has consciousness or not. But all those trees are home for a lot of animals. So uh, that is clear, right? So just think through that way, I think, I think every, you know, those single trees are uh, really important. And then, so why it is important, right? Why? Uh, how come trees are important and these things important because contributing uh, something for uh, animals, how it's important and how it's related to Buddhism, right? When you uh, think about Mahayana perspective, um, there are a lot of teachings and there are a lot of uh, prayers is you know to become you know a uh, element to help other sentient beings there are uh, prayers you know bodhisattvas want to be bridge want to be you know a uh, tree want to be something that is uh helpful and useful for other sentient beings. In where Bodhisattva's life, you know, His Holiness uh, recite that stanza often, right? It says that Saso Juan Chimboda Nangashindo Tabariya Sinje Pado Mebai Nama Nyese Shiyasho It's saying that uh, Buddhist sadhuvas are praying. Sala Soba Juan Chambu means uh, uh, I want to be useful for other sentient beings as yes. four elements earth, fire, water, right? Then ear or wind, ear. Then he also said, I want to be a space to provide uh, goods for other sentient beings. So he was, that is clear, right? Those elements, earth, uh, water, air, right? Then the fire. Don't, don't think about when I say fire, you know, we don't have the thing like the wildfire in California or Australia, right? Just think about warmness, right? There's no heat, we cannot live. The lives depend on heat. We need, you know, something warm. That's why we are surviving. So like, so even that time, they understand how important is those elements for living beings. Not only that, I was so you know surprised when he said, "I want to be, become space." Now they have, I think, you know, the scientific saying like that: space is not just empty. Space has more meaning than that, right? You know, there, some people understand also space is kind of a element and form there. 
but I'm not scientist. Just that these are what I was, you know, uh, heard and uh, I was told. But in here is clear, right? So why space stays much longer than other elements? One thing is that, right? Nangashin takvarya. Want to be like space that provide, you know, uh, uh, lives for all sentient beings. Then the meaning of space in, in Dharma is sometimes it says space means uh, providing opportunity. Right. So in that case, uh, even the uh, the real practitioner, uh, true Bodhisattva like Shantideva, refer that uh, the elements in this world are important. Right. It's like source of life, and he then not only that. He also want to be an element to help, you know, other sentient beings. So then, in due to this teaching, uh, to practice Mahayana Buddhism is really important to uh, to care about environmental issue. I don't know politics. But I know, uh, you know, what is uh, works with Buddhism, and what is important. Then sometimes, you know, if you think through that way, all of most of your practice also become effective. You know, we are always talking about accumulate uh, merit, do something good. You don't have to do that much. If you can just care about environment, right? So don't try to destroy less. Like earlier time in our practice, you know, we don't uh, prefer to use the poison in the field. We think that poison kills. Uh, bugs, in, insects in the field, right? They reduce it. Surely, you know, sometimes they have to, had to, but they reduce it. They will not do it crazy. They will don't, if, if there's a little harder way to do something different, then they will choose the harder one. Uh, so, so just think about it, this is the good thing. Now we understand we are not poisoning and killing only insects. We are killing people by poisoning things on, on your fruit trees and your crops, right? So, so, so um, this is uh, one thing. Then the... The one thing, you know, uh, it's not special for Mahayana practice. It's common practice in Buddhism. We understand, you know, in the Buddhist teaching, there's two things. Your own body and outer environment. So when I say your own body, what owned by you? Your body is your. Nobody will claim that's others, right? That is your personal thing, right? You have right to cut your hair or keep it longer or put color on it or whatever you do. Then there's one other thing, right? Uh, outside world, that is not your body. That is something you use with other people. They will call it some something in the maybe we can call it environment. 
the space where you live, right? Uh, and the uh, water, what you, what you use, and the air, what you breathe. These are, you know, in according to Buddhism, these are not your personal thing. They, you know, always they call it, it's an outcome of sheer karma. Remember, we always have two different kinds of karmas, a sheer karma and an individual karma. Individual karma gives you your own, you know, aggregates. The sheer karma brings, for example, in some place, all people in that place has a better karma than the environment turn into better place. Right, so uh, so now I'm trying to talk here more about uh, religious way a little bit. Uh, it's truly, you know, some of some people believe in karma, some people don't believe in karma. But, you know, sometimes it's very simple. Karma means action, right? So uh, I think a lot of people believe in the action. So uh, due to your action, right, then you get your own thing. Uh, due to uh, everybody's action, then you get good environment. Right? If everybody works together, you can make better society, better environment. Right? Then uh, one person can damage it. If someone is trying to damage, damage uh, this environment we share with other people, then that is not right thing to do. That is not right thing to do. Um, so in that case, we definitely have to know, right? Which is you are, have to share with, which is not your personal thing. Even though you buy it, even though you, you have legal paper on it, it's still you know, you must have the concern about how to do that. That's why it goes back to earlier, you know, manipulating uh, law. If you use law there to, you know, destroy others, then that is not right. According to law, it they say your body is not your body, your body is owned by government. It's not true, right? <laughs> Surely, you know, this is funny. You know, some countries, they might going to say, oh, this is not your body, this is our government property, we feed you. you know, if they say it like that, then I don't think that is right. Your body is your. The others, outside thing, even according to law, law it seems like you own 100% uh, actually is not like that. It is, you know, a common thing. Okay, so... Uh, Yeah, in that case, and in Buddhism, we're always talking about one thing, you know, uh, um, preciousness of human life, right? Uh, human life. So if you, uh, then, uh, then, you know, people have to explain it properly. They say, oh, preciousness of human life, but it doesn't mean that every single human life is precious. There is the precious human life and there is not that worthy human life. Then we get caution, right? So, yes, the human life is can be precious, it can be worse <coughs> than in a regular thing. So then, uh, you know, they're saying that, oh, why human life is precious? 
you can do a lot of good things. That's why it's precious. It, it can do much better than others. Other animals, right? Uh, then, uh, if you are alive, in you, if you are alive, this precious life or human life, it's become something that destroy others' happiness, others' well-being, uh, future generations' uh, resource for living. And then, it's not that it precious, right? It's not that precious. Then, then it's like uh, it's like that was one what uh, uh, what Nagarjuna said in his uh, letters for friends, right? He said that if you have a beautiful, big, beautiful tray, right? Maybe then it the golden tray. Then it has very precious gems around, rubies, jade, all these kind of precious, right? And then you use that tray to, you know, take out all garbage in your house, and those, you know, dust and dirt, and put everything in there, you know. Then you try to use that to take out your waste. Then that is not that wise. Similarly, when you have a beautiful human life, you have very capable brain, much smarter than others. You can use all your five fingers, <laughs> right? Something like that. You can use all these things. Then what you are doing is always damaging, you know, in... Uh, he said, Nagarjuna said, you are, if you are trying to always uh, do non virtuous a sinful, right? non virtuous means bad action, action that uh, destroy other people's happiness. When I say other people, you don't have to uh, think that far, right? You, other people start from your parents. Other people start from your kids. Other people start from your friends, right? So if you are alive, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> destroying their happiness and their well-being, and then you know it can be go far, right? Future generations, these things, and then surely uh, you are using your precious human life to you know all those uh, to do those ugly things then that does that is not that precious so then uh, Nagarjuna mentioned non virtue right non virtue in Tibetan is say uh, Migewa Migewa means what is the meaning of non virtue Something that brings suffering, something that brings uneasiness, that is called non virtue uh, So, I um, don't think that is the 100% perfect meaning, right? That is kind of... Uh, large understanding of that meaning, right? So, um, so he meant a spiritual thing that time, but we can think about practical thing this time. If you are careless, if you don't uh, think about others' well-being and enjoy your own, you know, feed your own greed and try to satisfy your own evil mind, then and that is, uh, I think, uh, 
that is kind of non-virtual. That is non-virtual. So then, um, then you are wasting your precious human life. So I don't mean that you know, throw away the garbage. Surely we have to throw away garbage, right? Uh, but I don't mean that don't buy anything. But what I mean is always have to uh, think about environmental issue and care about it. Uh, you know, even though there's two ways to do. If you're doing without caring, if you are doing without caring, has huge difference. If you do with caring, you will don't do that crazy. You can be a little crazy, but you cannot be that much crazy, right? So uh, that is important. Then, you know, uh, in big uh, understanding of Mahayana practice, you know, in the Buddhism is very different than other religion, I think, you know, this case. Because um, in the Buddhism, looks like if you look at in our altar, we have Buddha's uh, image there, we have a lot of, you know, Buddhist other words and deities image there. But when you open the book, when you open, look at the practice, you know, all living beings, Sentient beings should be there, right? What makes Buddha and Buddhist otherwise so special? Because of sentient beings, other living beings, other living beings makes Buddhist otherwise so special. If other living beings are not that important, how come Buddhist otherwise so special? Right? Living beings. These are important because of that who dedicate all their life for the well-being of other living beings. They were surprised, they were praised, these people. Like was Buddha himself. Buddha is not special, very special because uh, he left uh, his uh, palace. I don't think that makes him Buddha, right? Buddha is very special. One is his knowledge. He understand and he accept fact, then culture. Means like traditional way of thinking, right? And above that, he dedicated his whole life to uh, help others. He can go back to the palace. He can be, uh, you know, a palace guru and stay there and enjoy there, right? Then, uh, then maybe, you know, he can get more audience there. <laughs> I don't know. You know. The king can call all his, you know, militaries there, <laughs> whatever. So, but he did not. He worked outside all his life traveling, right? And always tired to avoid to stay in palace. So why? If he stay in palace, then he it's become a trap for him. Then he could not help those, you know, poor people, those uh, you know uh, who need re really help and who is uh, ready to move forward. So in that case, you know the preciousness of living beings makes bodhisattvas uh, uh, special and Buddhas are special, right? So maybe in other religions that is similar. All these great leaders, great religious uh, leaders, always the story is that it's not about them flying without wings, they can, you know, uh, get into the cave without door. It's not like that. About more about they are compassionate. They care about uh, others' life. So in that case, I think uh, what, uh, the conclusion is, I think, you know, the environmental is environmental care is very important because 
that life in this planet are precious and important. And that is what I try to say, uh, and I think that is what men teaching in Buddhism too. So, uh, thank you very much for having this, you know, this, uh, what do you call it, tedious talk. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you very much for being patient here. See you next week.